Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white Quintorius deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This is a deck that's pretty controlling in nature and wants to take advantage of Quintorius's passive ability, saying whenever we cast a spell from exile it deals 2 damage to each opponent and we gain 2 life. Then Quintorius can plus to make a 3-2 multicolored spirit token. The minus 3 lets us discover 4, the new take on the cascade mechanic, so that can provide a lot of value often finding some ramp cards or some removal and then if we don't want to cast it right away we can always decide to put it in hand instead and then the minus six ultimate which is quite achievable lets us exile any number of cards from our graveyard and then add a red mana for each card exile this way and we can play those cards this turn and that can also help trigger the passive ability so that can also be game ending so let's take a look at the rest of our deck i've split it up into a few different categories starting with the mana acceleration lots of artifacts to help deploy our planeswalkers ahead of schedule then we've got a pretty big category dedicated to spot removal to answer creatures and planeswalkers one for one we've got a bunch of sweeper effects as well to help catch back up against those more aggressive creature decks and then we've got a large section of cards that help us play cards from exile so that can also trigger quintorius's passive ability while generating card advantage in most cases and then we're also a bit of a super friends deck with lots of planeswalkers which play well alongside removal and sweepers so lots of these planeswalkers can also help play spells from exile while also generating a nice board presence and then we've got the miscellaneous section which includes another payoff for playing spells from exile pnlr generating thopter tokens each time we've got some adventure creatures which offer a bit of interaction and then once we play them from exile they also trigger the passive and then we also have a couple cards with foretell the sweeper doomscar of course one of them demon bolt another and when we cast those from exile they can also trigger quintorius so now it's time for our deep dive we've got our typical two mana accelerants including ornithopter of paradise which would die to some of our own sweepers but we can usually plan around it and we just want that critical mass of two mana accelerants file can also be quite nice since we tend to be empty-handed as we can play spells from exile so then file can also draw us additional cards got Skyclave Relic, which can potentially make multiple tokens to make even more mana. Staff of Completion can exchange a bit of life total to help us proliferate to maybe reach an ultimate sooner or to draw extra cards, and with a passive from Quintorius we can easily pay for it. The Celestus can also give us a bit of card selection and life gain, and Worn Power Stone also incredible here, making two mana if we get to untap with it. Then moving on to our spot removal, we've got Source to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt as one mana staples. Then a Frostbite is supported by our Snow Covered Basics to deal 3 damage. We've got Strangle dealing 3 at sorcery speed. Torch can maybe sacrifice a random token from Quintorius to deal 3 as opposed to 2. We've got Fateful Absence and Get Lost as instant speed answers to Planeswalkers, creatures, and in the case of Get Lost we can also destroy enchantments. And then Ossification can exile creatures and planeswalkers when enchanting a basic land. A Braid deals with artifacts or can deal 3 to creatures. Justice Strike can also deal with larger creatures that have high power. We've got Lightning Helix dealing 3 and gaining 3. Rip Apart also quite versatile, dealing 3 to a creature at sorcery speed or destroying an artifact or enchantment. And then a Loran can come down to destroy an artifact or enchantment while also maybe drawing a few extra cards. We've got Skyclave Apparition as another versatile answer. And Elspeth Conquers Death is also perfect in a deck that has a couple Planeswalkers that might come back from the graveyard. Then our sweepers include Anger of the Gods. I'm not playing Brotherhood's End since that would also damage our own Planeswalkers, whereas Anger of the Gods only affects creatures, exiling them as well. Then at 4 mana we've got Day of Judgment and Wrath of God, the classics. Depopulate also makes sense since it draws us a card if we destroy our own spirit token, which is multicolored. Could also play with Shatter the Sky, but that one doesn't draw us a card as often. And then a Doomscar, as we mentioned, also has synergy with Foretell, as we'll be able to cast a spell from Exile. And then in our Exile section we've got the Blade Reforged, which can provide extra card advantage by exiling the top card, picking up a plus one plus one counter in the process. And the Blade also grows whenever we discover or cascade for every individual card that goes to Exile, so that can represent a lot of counters out of nowhere. Good Valakut Exploration, providing card advantage with a landfall, dealing damage in the process perhaps. Got Throws of Chaos as a Cascade card with Retrace, so we can discard a land card in the late game to keep replaying it over and over while triggering Quintorius as well. 
We've got the Appraiser, another new addition that lets us discover three. We've got a Showdown, which can exile the top four cards while also distributing some plus one counters on chapters two and three. The Drancosaur can also provide a ton of card advantage while generating a three one dinosaur tokens and treasures. And then Urabrask, a 4-4 with haste that can exile our top card each turn, providing extra value while punishing the opponent and replacing their draw step with an exiled card that they're forced to play right away. Then Itali, a 6-6 that when it attacks will exile each player's top card that we get to play for free. The Carnosaur can be discarded for 3 mana to deal 3, or we can play it as a 7-6 Trampler that discovers 5 when it enters. And then uh, the Inner Sun can provide value turn after turn, making our spells uncounterable as well. And since this triggers at the beginning of our end step, we'll usually get immediate value even if the opponent does have an answer lined up. And hit to Motherload, another fun discover card that will at least give us a bunch of treasure tokens if we don't discover anything too expensive. And then our Planeswalker section includes the Gideon of the Trials, which is good at making the opponent overextend into our various sweeper effects. The Wandering Emperor we're all familiar with, and then we've got a string of Chandras that can exile the top card of our library that we get to play until end of turn. Fire Artisan, Pyromaster can also deal 1 damage to creatures and planeswalkers. We've got a Torch of Defiance which can add double red to help us ramp, and then can also deal 4 damage to a creature. Chandra Heart of Fire can deal 2 damage repeatedly, or can discard our hand and then exile the top 3 cards of our library that we get to play until end of turn. And then we've got Hope's Beacon, which can divide X damage to each of up to two targets, and can also exile the top five cards to find an instant or sorcery to play. And then the plus two adds two mana, which can also be quite helpful. And then we've got the Eternal Wonder, which also has a pseudo sweeper effect with a minus four, and can make double striking samurai. And then our miscellaneous section includes Curse of Silence, good at punishing the opponent's commander. We've got land stacks, especially nice on the draw, providing a lot of card advantage by finding our basics. We've got a giant killer as one of our adventure creatures, can chop down first and then play it as a 1-mana one 1-2 one that can tap things down while triggering Quintorius. Shieldbreaker destroys an artifact for 1-mana and then a 2-1 afterwards. And then a Pia, as we mentioned, can make a string of Thopter tokens quite easily. Good Bone Crusher Giant dealing 2 damage with the adventure, and then a 4 3. Demon Bolt, another card with Fortal, dealing 4 damage for 1 mana after we exiled it for 2. And then a Fable's always good value, giving us a bit of card selection, maybe discard removal spells in matchups where we don't need them. And then the Shaman can also maybe pull us ahead with extra mana, we've got plenty of spot removal to clear a path for it. And then Aurelia, also very nice to top off our curve, giving us additional attack steps to close out the game. And then our mana base is mostly just red-white dual lands for mana fixing. We've got a couple creature lands with a new bivouac and the Den of the Bugbear, which are also good at pressuring opposing planeswalkers. And then just lots of basics, couple channel lands for added interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing a dinosaur deck with a new Pantlaza, one of the commander cards that's still available on Arena. Okay, so... What do we think of our hand? Seems fine. No mana acceleration, but Curse can name Pantlaza. And then Pia plus Bone Crusher is pretty good. Stomping ground for Elvish Mystic, which we can stomp. And then maybe play Bone Crusher after playing Pia, so we get the extra Thopter token. Paleontologist is next. Could also Lightning Helix to take that out. Sure. Try to slow down their mana development. We have Doomscar as a sweeper, so that will be quite useful. Now swords as well. Could even swords the Shaman, foretell Doomscar, and then maybe wait to Doomscar until they get the Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Might be a little drastic, but let's go for it. And then if we wait to deploy Pi and Bone Crusher after we wipe the board, that might also play out better. Still need an extra white source to cast a Doomscar. Put on discarding Shepherd and a land. Ceratops is next. 
and strangle not quite what we wanted. So could play Bone Crusher just to get in the way of Ceratops and make our opponent overextend into the Doomscar. Doing nothing might be a little suspicious. All right, opponent can use this as removal to take out Bone Crusher. So yeah, if we find white mana for Doomscar, I'll happily cast it. There we go. And then we're a land away from Quintorius. Emperor can still deal with larger creatures that are tapped. The Registrar Alpha is a good one too. So it can hit us for three. Fateful Absence can deal with it. Can wait for them to attack and then Emperor exiles Regisaur. Although then their author Dino might also be able to attack. I think that's still okay. So there's still one land away from playing their commander. My people must contend with me. And then strangles a decent answer to the token. And Garrick's Uprising can draw more cards. And a Chandra, so no land here. In that case, probably better to strangle the Dino, keep up absence. Remember your training. All right, time for Pantlaza. We'll draw since we can use the land. And then I guess we'll let the trigger resolve before deciding what to Fateful Absence. This only triggers once each turn, so even if they discover another dinosaur, that's fine. Into the north means they'll be able to replay Pantlaza quite easily. Okay, so we can finally deploy Quintorius, but Pantlaza can still provide a lot of value. So the game is far from over. For now, Quintorius probably makes a token. Since if we discover a removal spell or a sweeper, it would not be very good. And maybe work our way up towards the minus six ultimate. For now, we're finally on the board. And then uh, Chandra could also be quite effective next turn. Our opponent's got enough mana to play some of the bigger, scary dinosaurs. But they're just going to replay their commander. Uprising draws. And the Sun Favored discovers a Snubhorn sentry. That one's acceptable. Doesn't draw with the Uprising, at least. They can still sack a clue token to draw. And an Anger of the Gods is next. Okay, so if I play Chandra, can deal with Pantlaza and Sentry. Can start attacking, whereas Quintorius can keep taking up. I think that's fine. That works. Importantly, Anger of the Gods does not damage your own Planeswalkers, which is why I'm playing it over something like a Brotherhood's End. Opponent taps out to sack the clue. Okay. I'm not hitting my spot, but I'm still nervous about what large dinos or opponent could cast. Maybe they've got some damage-based sweeper that can deal with planeswalkers. 
got quite a few cards in the graveyard, mostly removal that Quintorius could maybe replay with ultimate. Alright, Lightning Bolt will finish off Chandra. This can't be the end. And the response lies out once again. Finding a Rampaging Raptor, that one's very good against Planeswalkers. And draws with Uprising as well. Alright, so luckily we can double block. So our opponent's gonna hang back, Gideon's next. So we've got an interesting line available here where we ultimate Quintorius, exiling nine cards. That's nine mana. I can even replay a land. Maybe after replaying Quintorius as a card from our command zone, which will cost seven mana. So then I'll have eight mana left, can still replay Chandra, and then maybe double a burn spell while triggering Quintorius. Kind of like that idea. Could also go to town with Pia making Thopters. But either way, let's start with an ultimate. And then step one, replay Quintorius. Then play the land from Exile, unless we want to play Pia. And then I would still have the mana to play Chandra, so I think that's okay. Make a Thopter, this can get a Plains. And then we could double Lightning Helix with Chandra. After making mana. Drain with Quintorius. So we're not too far from just winning the game here. So we'll go red and white. Lightning Helix go upstairs, times two is six damage, plus two from Quintorius is eight. Bones at nine. So we're pretty close to lethal, but not quite. So maybe it's still better to manage the creatures, maybe double up on Swords to Plowshares to exile both. And then Lightning Helix can just go upstairs. Or we could stomp with Bone Crusher so we can still play it later. And alright, that's enough for a concession. Yeah, that's the value from a Quintorius Ultimate, letting us replay it right away so we can drain while playing spells from exile. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Karamonix, a rat deck, and uh, we don't have a sweeper in hand, which is what we really want. Although Chandra dealing one damage repeatedly to Rat Colony could be effective, so I'll keep. Can't quite play it turn 3 unless we find another red source. But it's still a pretty good card in the matchup. Turn 2, there's a Rat Colony, as suspected. And then I'll get the Celestos going for now over file. Next turn could potentially play a tally with a land. Or we can start mowing down rat colonies with Chandra. Would go up to 5 loyalty, so unlikely to die on the way back. And can even play file first. So kind of like that sequencing as opposed to playing Itali and maybe losing it to a removal spell. And then Quintorius making spirit tokens is also going to be pretty effective. Now, you're fire. now with Karamonix they can find a bunch more rats, but we can deal with them pretty easily. Alright, so Chandra takes 4 damage, still not dead. So that's gonna keep taking out rats. Quintorius makes a spirit. I think I'm happy with that. As opposed to playing Itali, which is still an option. Yeah, let's go with Quintorius.
They might be able to finish off Chandra, but they'll lose another rat in the process. Alright, they found some good ones. Maronar and Lord Skitter. So Chandra down, still happy to trade. Now I could minus Quintorius in the hopes of discovering a sweeper. I think it's reasonable to still make a spirit, although with our rats having fear next turn, we won't be able to block. This is probably my last chance to discover. And find a Wandering Emperor. Can exile rats. And then we could use Elspeth Conqueror's Death to exile Karamonix. So they're down to one rat colony. Or we can deploy a tally. Close call. So let's say we do remove Karamonix. Rat colony finishes off Quintorius. Could leave it in the graveyard to eventually get back with Conqueror's Death. Or we can deploy a tally and then hope to exile some good cards with the ability. Yeah, another interesting decision. Let's go for a tally. I'll keep Iron Crag as a mana producing artifact. And then once we're empty handed, File can also draw more cards. And then Conqueror's Death can answer Maronar, which is scarier than Karamonix. So I'm expecting them to run out the legendary rat. But they might have something else in hand. There it is. So we'll lose both planeswalkers here. And then I have to decide if I want to leave Quintorius in the graveyard. It seems a bit risky. They might exile it anyway with Lord Skitter, I suppose. But that might leave me with fewer options later. You know what, let's leave it there. And then start by attacking with a tally. See what we hit. A land and a rat colony. So it could have been better. Could activate Celestus, could leave a Den on defense. I guess activating Celestus is fine, switch it to night, next turn it switches back to day, so we get to loot a bunch more. And then we get to draw two thanks to Files, so that's nice. And then Inner Sun versus Showdown is another interesting decision. Kind of like the Inner Sun more. So there's Lord Skitter. And a Rat Colony, so... Don't think we'll have any Planeswalkers left for Conqueror's Death. So that's why keeping Quintorius in there seemed worth it. So yeah, we will need to find a few more sweepers along the way. And then they can still replay Karamonix to find more threats. Take three. And a Chandra Hope's Beacon. That's nice. So that's probably better than playing the Inner Sun. If I take out let's say double rat colony this shrinks down to five power so then it's not as easy for them to trade off for a tally so that might be better than uh, taking out lord skitter here even though it would be nice to keep quintorius in the graveyard could also attack i suppose if they trade for a tally we just get a tally back after dealing with lord skitter sure A land and rat colony. So they just trade for one rat. 
And then Chandra deals with Skitter and a colony. Okay, and then could activate Celestis once more, but it's only going to draw one card this time. Giant Killer deals with a large rat. I think we hang on to our six mana card. Depopulate. Well, there's a sweeper I wanted. Do I actually still keep it? If Conqueror's Death gets back Itali, then it's not that great, but I guess we can just go for a Planeswalker. And then having Depopulate is probably worth it. And of course we do want access to Quintorius, otherwise it's going to stay in the graveyard for good. Alright, glad we kept the Sweeper. I will be losing Chandra here. Could also get Chandra back, but then again, access to Quintorius will be shut down. Can uh, let damage happen, attack back with the two rat colonies before casting the Sweeper, I suppose. Doomscar now as well. Yeah, let's go for Quintorius. And then let's attack. And depopulate, still gonna lose a bunch of life to the Wicked Roll tokens. Now we can foretell Doomscar, which keeps our hands nice and empty for file. And then I think we just make a token so we can maybe minus six Quintorius, thanks to that extra loyalty we could already ultimate next turn. And a Staff of Completion is another way of increasing loyalty, so don't mind if I do. And then there's plenty of goodies to get back. Caramonics to refuel. So yeah, this game ended up being a lot more complicated than I originally imagined. Chandra was effective, but the rat colonies just keep coming. Throws of Chaos is also interesting. So let's say we play Staff of Completion, tap it to proliferate. Could have also proliferated after putting Planeswalkers in play, but then we would not have Quintorius in play anymore. So I think we just exile everything here. And then we'll figure it out. Okay, can play a land even. Get a planes. And then we might just be able to win the game right now with Quintorius triggers and Chandra going upstairs, but we could also take over with uh, Inner Sun. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, Blue-Green Ramp. This is always going to be a tough matchup for us. Our hand is acceptable, but I don't know if it's going to be quite good enough here, even with the early acceleration and removal. Blue-Green is just going to produce too much mana for us to handle. I will happily Swords and Elves. We will be close to empty-handed soon, so the file can maybe draw extra cards as well. And we've got another efficient turn here, file, rip apart, leafkin. So we've been lucky that our opponent had mana creatures as opposed to sorceries to put extra lands in play. Opponent could also have a counterspell here for all we know, but I don't think we can really play around it. Counterspell is also not at their best in a Cascade deck, since if you Cascade into them, they wouldn't be doing much. I'll start plussing for now. If we minus and hit a removal spell, we wouldn't be too excited. Four mana for invasion, getting two lands, so now our opponent finally gets their engine started. Okay, I'll just keep plussing. 
play Ornithopter for Tala Doomscar. And then we can still Fateful Absence in the opponent's turn to set up File to draw to. And there's Emoti cascading into Palladiumir. Could also be worth it to hold Fateful Absence and just cast a Doomscar next turn. I think for now it's actually close whether we take out Mir or Emoti, since both are quite scary in their own right. Let's go for Emoti. And then I could be convinced to discover with Quintorius, but no, opponent just concedes. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kalein, so treasure deck. And yeah, land tax on the draw is always nice. Day of Judgment to catch back up. And then hopefully we can pull ahead with our Planeswalker. Not too many ways for red-black to destroy an enchantment. And yeah, our opponent's gonna let us draw all the lands we want. Now Justice Strike does not answer Kalein. But I don't think that's going to be a huge problem. Could use Swords to Plowshares. I think I'm fine just maybe playing an untapped land, can discard Sacred Foundry. So we can Justice Strike if needed. It's going to be an Arcane Signet. So we'll have drawn six basics of land tax already. But our opponent is gearing up for a big turn here with the extra treasure and signet. And get to hang on to Swords to Plowshares. And now Celesta is also a way of discarding excess lands. So they'll have access to 6 mana total. We're pretty soft to an opposing Planeswalker, so hopefully that doesn't show up. Seize the Spoils is acceptable. And Kalein just hits us for one. So we could tap out for Quintorius next turn, although could be vulnerable to a haste creature. Discarding all these additional cards could also come in handy if we eventually ultimate Quintorius. As we draw another land here. I think I'll take the risk of tapping out for Quintorius so we can make a spirit token... And then we'll see if they have an answer to it. Just hoping our opponent overextends into our Day of Judgment. Lightning Bolt or Spirit is fine. And that's going to be your Rankle and Torbrain. Okay, so... They did not use a treasure mana, so... They could have taken out Quintorius here if they really wanted to. Thanks to Kalein's ability. So maybe they misjudged it. Now we can wipe the board and hang on to Swords to Plowshares, I want to say, as opposed to playing a Guardian Idol. Although that's a close call. Immortal Sun, alright, that shuts down all Planeswalkers, so that's very effective against our deck. Yep. We'll still have the passive from Quintorius, but that's not nearly as exciting here. And we've got a bunch more Planeswalkers in the deck that will be shut down. 
So we want to go digging with the Celestus to try and find an answer. Don't have many basics left in the deck. So at least we've got that going for us. But we still seem to draw all of them. Okay, so play planes, hit for three. Play idle, keep up swords. Quite a few lands in the graveyard. But our opponent also hasn't missed a land drop yet. But now they're gonna start pulling ahead with the extra card draw. Kalina's back. Also dies to a simple frostbite. And Avraska is next. Well, that's shut down because of Immortal Sun. Frostbite can also damage Planeswalkers, so maybe better served dealing with those once we find an answer to the sun. Depopulate, not the most exciting here. And a Valakut Exploration. Alright, that could do some work. So let's start there. Exiling a Drancosaur. Alright, that's certainly worth playing. And then we could take out Kalein, attack Vraska for three. Or we can hang on to Swords to Plowshares for the time being. Impossible that our opponents got their own sweeper. Vraska takes three. His opponent wants to hang on to Kalein. Grim Tutor, alright, that's scary. Opponent can find any card in their deck. And they certainly have the mana to cast it. So not sure what that will be. Maybe part of a two-card combo. Bolas has said it all. Yeah, that's a good one. So that happens. Blood money, destroying all creatures. So could frostbite Vraska, but I guess we can wait. Opponent is at 11, so maybe Valakut Exploration can do some damage alongside Guardian Idol. Never mind, Call Against Command is now going after the Celestus. So that shuts down one of our card draw engines. And Quintorio is down as well. Could still be worth replaying alongside Exploration here. Wandering Emperor also doesn't do much. So play a land, see what we hit off Exploration. Cold Steel Heart. So we can just to strike the Paladin. And then Quintorius is going to be 7 mana to replay. I guess it's still maybe worth it just to get it in play to deal more damage with Exploration. And we'll take out the Paladin here. Deal one with Exploration.
Getting to the point where they won't be casting many spells off the top with Citadel anymore. Artist is scary, although still have a couple answers here. Ideally we don't need two swords so our opponent doesn't gain any life. Thoughtseize is gonna have a look. So that can take away or depopulate. Goes for swords instead. I guess with depopulate Kalena at least draws a card, but the life gain from swords is also quite important. A land tax triggers, get our last basic. So most of our top decks should be good. Signet, not quite. So play land, see what we exile. Chandra, which I guess still deals two damage alongside Quintorius. Then we'll depopulate. Could have also ignored Chandra, just cast a depopulate attack with Idol, and if her opponent didn't have any instant speed removal, the one extra damage from exploration would have been game. But I have to imagine they've got some spot removal left. So now our opponent's at one, facing exploration and the passive from Quintorius. Opponent can use Citadel to drain us for ten. But decides not to. Well, let's see what happens. Can they gain life? That is the question. Kalane once again. And a Bedevil to deal with Quintorius. But yeah, the exploration itself could still be game over. Sticky Fingers is fine. And yeah, our opponent seems pretty dead here. They can activate Citadel and make us lose 10 life. No more lands to find. And finally, Loron can destroy the Immortal Sun. And Chandra can get the job done here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver. Hopefully it's more of a creature build as opposed to five color or good stuff. So our sweepers can be quite powerful in that matchup. This hand is okay against a creature build, not so great against five color or good stuff. But I'll try it out. At least we can still exile this and then play Bone Crusher so we can maybe draw extra cards with File. Okay, go File plus Guardian Idol. And then next turn we can play Quintorius. Gonna be a Selvala pointing more towards five color good stuff as opposed to a sliver deck. Either way, we could also play a Tally now, which would also draw off Selvala, which I don't mind. And then next turn, maybe Demon Bolts. Opponent plays a first sliver. Cascading into a Displacer Kitten. That one we can also stomp. So it could have been worse. Could rip apart and Demon Ball to get rid of the first sliver. So we open up Itali to attack without uh, dying here. And then we should still be able to stomp Displacer Kitten. So sure, we'll try that. even though we're not dealing with Silvala now. Start by attacking. And then next turn could be a good time for Quintorius. Hit the Mother Load and a Time Warp. Well, that's about as good as it gets. Take an extra turn, make a bunch of treasure 
And uh, yeah, that's game over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Myco Tyrant, so a self mill deck. And yeah, we've got a couple sweepers here to clean up all those tokens. Land tax on the draw, always nice. Cold Steel Heart naming red, can set up turn 3 Chandra, which is also awesome here. Mesmeric Orb, alright, that's gonna mill us as well. So we'll have to be a little bit careful. Might not want to get too overzealous with this land tax. But for now, Cold Steel Heart on red. Definitely a nice combination with the Myco Tyrant. Going for a Pestle and Cauldron first. So do I want a land tax? Maybe we can still wait. Since I've got two lands in hand. And then go Chandra, add mana, foretell Demon Bolt. Opponent discarding a blood gas, which they can return next turn. Can have a look at their graveyard. And the Myco Tyrants can make four tokens right away. But we've got the Day of Judgment at the ready. Now I don't mind using a land tax. Might be our last chance. And then definitely gonna wipe the board here. And what else do we want to do? If I add mana... Let's see, I might have made too much red mana here. Can't quite go Gideon plus depopulate. I guess in that case I can just deal two damage. Oh, this is gonna hurt. And keep up Demon Bolt. And then the Inner Sun could also be fun to get going, especially alongside Quintorius. Nationals Altar can set up a lot of mana once they get a few tokens and Bloodgast is back. Could Demon Bolt Bloodgast now? I think we'll just wait, maybe target it with Gideon. And no need to land tax. Okay, so we'll keep playing white sources, and then now might be a time to add mana. Play the inner sun, and then I would still have Demon Bolt available. Temple's not going to be very useful when our opponent's milling us with Mesmeric Orb. And we find a Wrath of God. Could still put it in hand. I guess I'll just cast it, since we have a Depopulate left. Discarding a Sir Conrad. So our opponent's just playing out of the graveyard at this point. And yeah, with a Silver Smote Ghoul and a Bloodcast, they might be able to assemble something. Ooh, Spider Spawning. Yeah, that also requires a sweeper. Good thing we have one left. I'll let Chandra take one. If our opponent goes for Myco Tyrants, we can just Demon Bolt it before it makes any tokens. Bloodgast is back. 
And there's a Micro Tyrant. So before they move to the next phase, we'll take it out. They can sack it to Astronaut's Altar, but they wouldn't be replaying it here. And yeah, opponent's gonna flash back spider spawning right now. Thanks to the altar making mana. Nine spiders. Take our turn. No need for lane tax. We've milled a few answers to the artifact. Iron Crag is next. Okay, so we're definitely going to have to depopulate. So, yeah, we can play Quintorius as well here. Today's my lucky day. They can make a bunch of mana, which they can then use to activate Cauldron and draw a card. And our graveyard is relevant with Quintorius's ultimate which is probably what we're going to work towards here by plussing. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, now we've got the Inner Sun alongside Quintorius providing a ton of value. And then maybe even a Chandra Emblem can close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Amalia. And uh, our hand is lacking some cheap removal and some mana acceleration, so I'll take a mulligan. This is better. Ornithopter a little bit at odds with our sweepers, but it's just so important to have a consistent 2 mana accelerant in a deck like this that wants to play 4 mana planeswalkers on turn 3. And now of course with arcane signets, we don't have to worry about it. So we'll just play turn two Signet. Could still be convinced to play Ornithopter first. Since Signet we can tap for mana the turn we play it. And I'm not in a hurry to cast Anger. I would rather just ramp out the Inner Sun. And Daxos is next. Can gain them more life. So an Anger would have been okay here. But uh, I think we'll be fine. If Ornithopter survives, we can play our Inner Sun next turn already. And we've got Chop Down at the ready to take out a larger creature. Cupboarden. Okay. So that will mutate. And let Amalia explore, so now it's within chop down range, but it does have ward pay 3 life. That's uh, not a big deal. I guess I should just go for it now, probably give them an explore trigger that they shouldn't have gotten. So that worked out. Play the Inner Sun, and then now we're happy to play Sweeper. Conquer's Death. I could hang on to it, could put it in play to eventually reanimate a creature or Planeswalker. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, still cast it here. Next turn we can go for Aurelia. Which still survives their own anger. So Malia is back. There's a couple creature lands we'll have to worry about. Those are good at pressuring planeswalkers. But this anger is going to be quite devastating. We are down to 14, so we have to watch out here. If Amalia grows up to a 4-4, it survives Anger. So I don't think we'll have time to play Aurelia first. Which is fine. Cast Anger, and then... Can still play a Giant Killer here. Put 
put that in hand. And then the final chapter of Conqueror's Death wouldn't be doing anything for us. A wrinkle. And just take it out now. I guess we can just bargain sacking Conqueror's Death. So we get some use out of it. Don't need land anymore. And then Quintorius versus Aurelia. I guess we can still deploy our Planeswalker here, make a spirit, and drain end of turn with Inner Sun. And then with more creatures, Aurelia is also going to be more powerful. And then Giant Killer, I'm just going to hold back to maybe tap down a Hive if that attacks. Find a Wandering Emperor, don't mind if I do. Make a Samurai. So now Aurelion's looking great. I guess the game didn't give us priority back to activate the Wandering Emperor. Might have wanted to put a stop there. Now they might be tempted to animate Hive to attack Wandering Emperor. Then we'll just use Giant Killer. And yeah, her opponent explodes. Too much value from the Inner Sun. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Tokens deck with the Reese the Redeemed. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep this land tax on the play. Not quite as exciting as on the draw, but might still eventually net us a few extra lanes. Ornithopter gives us some ramp. Yeah, let's just play Ornithopter so Blader Forged can maybe get some value. The Lighted Halfling, another mana creature, and join the dance to start making tokens. So now they can block Blader Forged pretty well. Alright, so don't have the most exciting turn here. I think it's still Blade, and then maybe. Trade for some creatures. Might be able to exile a land. If not, we're enabling a land tax, so that's still fine. Did find a land. Opponent takes it. I'll still hit my land drop. Might see the opponent ramp putting additional lands into play, and that will enable land tax as well. Ooh, Tender Shoot Dried, that's a must answer. Aurelia will be nice. I guess I could attack first and then see if we maybe exile a removal spell we can cast instead. Pia. That one we can still play. Take out Dryad. And then, yeah, we're stuck on three, so next turn we might be able to get the land tax going. Although our opponent could also hold the land back. But they don't. There's a Reese. Don't have an answer to it yet. Although with Aurelia we can fly over and do some damage. Although that will have to wait a turn. For now we can play Quintorius. And, uh, yeah, Frostbite could also go after Reese. Right now they would only be making a couple of human tokens, so it's a, not a disaster if they activate it. So I don't mind getting my Planeswalker out there. Putin might have some instant speed tokens, I suppose, which will then make the activation a lot scarier. I'll see what we can discover. A sweeper. Alright, I guess we'll cast it here. We did grow Blade or Forge quite a bit since it grows for each card that's exiled with Discover or Cascade. But I'm pretty happy to wipe the board here. 
and then hopefully untap with a Planeswalker next turn, but they might have some tokens at end of turn. And then now a land can go. We'll get to trigger land tax once more. Okay, trigger land tax. Can make a spirit token. Frostbite deals with Shanna. And then maybe Wandering Emperor as well. I'll play it now so we don't have to discard as many cards to hand size. Who's the token deck now? And next turn could just slam down Aurelia. Could have some fun with the Inner Sun. So yeah, despite being on the play, Lantax netted us quite a few extra cards. Plus one counter on, let's say, the Spirit token. And attack. Aurelia plus Itali could also be a lot of fun, but probably not gonna see those in action. Bonan takes it all, falls to two. Okay, probably could have discarded Sacred Foundry there. That's all right. And now if we just cast anything from exile, we can close out the game with Quintorius, so the inner sun will do it. All right, so we get to see our red-white Quintorius deck in action. And yeah, overall, the deck seems pretty fun, especially when facing opposing creature decks. If we're up against more controlling builds or ramp decks, things can get pretty tough since our deck just doesn't quite line up if our opponent goes over the top, but against most creature strategies, red-white can be pretty effective. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!